in his letter to the Romans, Paul writes that through one man came sin, and through sin, death. And although what I'm going to mention, Paul would include in death, I think it worthwhile to uh, be more specific. Through sin came shame. Through sin came fear. Through sin came a break in relationship with God. Through sin came a break in the relationship of Adam and Eve. Through sin, you could argue, even came a break in the relationship with humanity and the rest of creation. And so, shame. Adam and Eve realized they're naked and they clothed themselves. Aquinas would say that shame is that fear of the other's malice, which Aquinas means technically in someone using or um, abusing you. And so gone is that easy comfortability between Adam and Eve, and now they are beginning to protect themselves against each other. And you see why. And Adam, immediately Adam blames Eve for his sin. Or attributes it to her, to her influence. You see a break in the relationship, Adam and Eve, with God. They hide. They are now afraid of God. This is not fear as in the gift of the Holy Spirit, all in wonder in God's presence. This is being afraid of God. And there's a break in that relationship, not on God's part, right? But on Adam and Eve's part, humanity's part. Now, Adam and Eve leave the garden. Now they make their um, living by the sweat of their brow and in toil. And now they find that um, creation is not uh, with them and aiding them necessarily, but now they have to contend with creation. And this comes about because Adam and Eve want their own will. And then here we are tonight celebrating Immaculate Conception. And in one sense, what this feast is, it's a feast of God's determination to reestablish this relationship with us and to allow us to reestablish our relationship with each other and have communion again. And it comes about through Mary. And what she does is not insist on her own will or desire her own will or Uh, live by her own will, but instead she gives her will to God. And she does that, we're used to this phrase, behold the handmaid of the Lord. And the word handmaid doesn't really bother us, you know. I don't think, I I don't know about you, but uh, other people have mentioned, and I I have this kind of medieval picture, you know, of a, 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 a... a, uh, a royal uh, woman or something with her maids about her. And that maid, the word maid seems fairly benign. But actually what Mary says is something different that will bother us, that does bother us. She says, Edu dule curiu, behold the slave of the Lord. And we don't like that word slave and for good reasons. But Mary shows us something about this kind of being a slave. And Paul knows it too. The beginning of Paul's letter to the Romans, he said, he he writes, Paulos, doulos, Jesu Christu. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus. 
And he lives what Mary says, let it be to me according to your word. Not according to me, but according to you. So when is a slave not a slave? When he or she chooses slavery to God. And it's interesting, Adam and Eve stepping out into their own will, you think, okay, they're breaking out, right? But really, they are closing up. Because now they hide, now they are in fear of God, fear of each other, right? And they become a slave to sin, Paul says. Whoever sins, and this is in John also, whoever sins becomes a slave of sin. And we know that. It's much harder not to do a sin again than it is not to do it the first time. You know, do it once and it's, it's easier to do it a second time and a second time. And the next thing you know, it's really hard not to do it. But Mary chooses a different path. I'll be the slave of God. And she finds freedom that no one else has found, right? Not to the degree that she did. And this is both her choice and a grace. It's always good to remind us ourselves exactly of what this doctrine is. Pius IX wrote, that um, the Immaculate Conception means that from the moment of Mary's conception, by a singular grace, a grace that no one else has known, in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, and so she also needs to be saved. This is a grace that comes to her through Jesus, right? She herself says, God, my Savior. So from the moment of her conception by singular grace, in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, Mary was kept free from all stain of original sin. And so part of this freedom she finds is grace, and part of it is her willingness to become a slave of God. And so, as we celebrate this wonderful work that God has done, as we celebrate this wonderful response of Mary, let us think about that for ourselves as well. Insisting on our own will over God's does not bring us the freedom that we think it does. True freedom lies in giving our lives over to God, however that means for each of us, right? But surrendering ourselves to God and to God's will. Seeking God's will in all things brings us the freedom that we seek.